السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين Dear viewers, welcome again to our new episode of Youth Matters Insha'Allah today we shall discuss about a very significant topic and that is stress management We know we all have stress We know especially the youth undergoes different types and aspects of stress. Alhamdulillah, we are here to discuss on this crucial topic. And as always, I'm accompanied with my brothers over here. We have Ahmed, we have Mustafa, we have Ali, and we have Idris. Before we get into the subject, let's watch a clip pertaining to the topic. Seven tips to overcome any trial in your life. Tip one control your tongue true patience is at the first strike of calamity and this is where the golden reward lies when the son of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed away he said the eyes shed tears and the heart grieves but we do not say anything except what is pleasing to allah tip two turn to allah Say inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon To Allah we belong and to Him we shall return Or Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal All praises for Allah in all circumstances The more you fill your heart with Allah over everything else The easier Allah will make it for you to get through the trial Tip 3 Trust in Allah's decree Remember that Allah has decreed this trial for you and his decree is always perfect. Allah is the all-knowing and all-wise. So he has the full picture, whereas we only see a tiny pixel. Even though you might not feel or see the good in it, trust that your trial is the best thing in the world for you at that time. Tip 4. Use this trial to get closer to Allah. Don't waste this opportunity to take your relationship with Allah to another level. Through the mercy of Allah, this trial could be a means for your sins to be forgiven and might be your ticket to Jannah. Tip 5. Be grateful. You might be thinking, be grateful for what? Remember, no matter how tough your situation is, there are always people who are worse off than you and even your trial could have been worse. Thank Allah for the blessings that you do have. Tip 6. Take action there is usually some physical action you can take to make the situation better focus on what's in your control and be proactive if you can't think of any specific action do more good deeds like helping others or reading the quran tip seven make dua to allah remember that allah knows the pain you're going through and he is with you it's vital to seek advice from righteous friends who will remind you of Allah, but rely on Allah as your ultimate source of strength and comfort. May Allah give me and you the tawfiq to implement these tips. My brothers and sisters, stress cannot be skipped in our lives. We all have to go through this phase. And this is a part of and parcel of life, subhanAllah. And that's how we actually grow and we are evaluated based on what we actually undergo right yeah right because you know a lot of people think that uh, stress is a part of life do you son so uh, some people think that um all the stress that so it's a part of life so is it really a part of life or because or there's something wrong uh, with me because i'm always sad so there is need a kind of explanation when it comes to this matter. absolutely allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the formula of mindset and that is الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا. We have been created by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. The life and death has been created by Allah, and Allah gives the reason why are we created because of the tests. So test is given. It's basically a part and parcel of life. And Subhanallah, this comes as a tip of programming a person to relax. Why? Because he knows. That test is there for sure. So he's not going to be out of the problem. He will always have <coughs> the problems and challenges. And because of these things, 
he will always have stress. The idea is how he manages or how she manages the stress that he or she has. So undoubtedly, it's a part of life. Allah Rabbul Izza, he says in Surah Baqarah, Surah number 2, Ayah number 155, that Allah Rabbul Izza, he will test us with something that is of hunger, of our own self, loss of wealth, loss of health, lot of many things. But we are going to be tested for sure. That's a given <laughs> formula of life. So yes, to answer your question in short, it is a part of life. Um, Sheikh, uh, sometimes a person would always face these kind of challenges in life and I would like to know the, the fact that the, uh, that the Prophet Sallallahu was told by Allah that you would uh, nearly kill yourself because you feared for this, uh, the, the disbelievers who were having hard times believing in Islam. Now, um, what about this occasion? Can you explain that to me please? Absolutely. It was a period when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he was in absolute mm. concern for the Ummah. You know, when the Prophet ﷺ was given the prophethood, it was not an easy task for him. We know that the different types of revelations that came into him, uh, you know, and one of the toughest and the difficult one was ringing of the bell that he used to receive the revelation. So it wasn't an easy task for him to be a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of that beautiful and high honor, obviously we know, we talked about it, the more the honor is, the greater the responsibility is. And because of that greater responsibility, the Prophet ﷺ was concerned about each and every one of them, that they should be saved from the hellfire, that they should understand the value of life, that they should know the purpose of their existence. And that is what the point of concern of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so much so that, that, they, that he felt that you know uh, it, was, it was going beyond the borders that he was getting into a meaningful stress. Again, we need to know that it's not, it was not a meaningless stress. It was very meaningful stress, but stress indeed. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was kind of consoled and, and, and given that, that sympathy by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that O oh, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you would almost kill yourself in a way that you will, you will stress yourself so much because of the disobedience and the disbelief of those people, right? Uh, what about like if I face certain the, the same problems, uh, what should I do? What should be the steps? The first step is to understand the fact as I mentioned to realize and recognize that you are here for a test and you need to know that these tests are temporary because your life and my life is temporary so that is a relaxing factor actually when you know that you know what for example when we all given exams during the exams that period you know a month or a two we are most stressful but we know that is not going to be last for the whole year so we treat this as a relaxing factor that you know what you just need to work hard really on those two months and then the the future period is going to be okay but we need to realize that this life is temporary one day 20 years 30 years 40 years we see our beloved ones whether he's a kid or youngster or an old person they have to die one day so when we uh, recognize this fact that it's going to be temporary and tests are temporary then we, we kind of calm ourselves. That's number one. Number two, Allah subhanahu ta'ala talks about the, the formula of how you can actually seek assistance. Allah Rabbul Iza, He says, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ salah. Allah gave two effective tips on this particular uh, you know, uh, uh, portion of stress management. Whenever you are into that stress, the idea is you seek the support through patience and through salah. These are the two things that we need to actually uh, adopt at every situation whenever we feel stress. You know, mm. uh, and, and this, is, this, this goes subhanallah so well when you have this combination of patience and salah. Patience and salah will give you again the resistance and the, re the resilience quality to be able to adapt things. You know, when you have patience, we know that patience is just not waiting. In Islam, in Arabic, when we say patience, it is all about standing firmly on the truth and facing 
yourself to, to the reality of the temptations that they have, protecting yourself from, from that and carrying on with that truth. That is patience. And as we know that the prophets were the most who were tested the most, you know, he, and because they were the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when Allah Rabbul Izza chooses them to be the prophets and the messengers, gave them that honor, he obviously tested them the most. And we see that there, there, there lies an opportunity. They took this as a kind of an opportunity in that darkness. You know, whenever they encounter any kind of stress, they see that there is an opportunity. So answering what you said, Mustafa, is to have these, you know, formulas and strategies in mind in order for us to combat the stress. We know that we cannot, you know, avoid or skip stress, but we can actually manage our stress. And that is what we're talking about. And these are the effective, effective strategies and steps that one, when takes it and implements in life, we see there is there is a very positive outlook of our personality that we can actually you know uh, display and and share with the people share with the people these steps so that you know our own loved ones when they get into sad situation in sorrow situation they don't kind of you know uh, stressed out and just give up their belief subhanallah in allah rabbul isa so when they have these things inshallah they will be able to cope it up and take it further Brothers and sisters, we shall be back after a right, uh, you know, after a break, uh, talking about the stress management. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back after a break, my brothers and sisters, dear viewers. We're talking about stress. We're talking about how we can actually, uh, you know, manage the stress. And we talked uh, uh, some of the tips and techniques that are prescribed and described. Uh, in the Quran and the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, how we can actually manage the stress by being, uh, a, you know, able to be patient and uh, having the element of salah as a proper and effective way of actually handling our pressure. Mm. Uh, well, uh, that we said, uh, stress is somehow, you know, inevitable in our life that it's always there. And this makes someone to question, then if so, I mean, what is the significance of that? Why, why are we tested? And um, most importantly, that we are now seeing the surge rate of, uh, of, of uh, suicidal commits. I mean, people commit suicide, young men, unfortunately, in Europe and in Americas because of stress, frustration, and depression. Then uh, Islamically, what are the remedies? What are the possible ways to handle, I mean, stress if it is inevitable in our life that Absolutely. it is Absolutely. As, as we know, uh, as we clearly outlined that mm. it is inevitable. We mm. cannot get away from it. Mm. Now, uh, somebody asked question, why are we being tested? You know, in the entire life, in all aspects and dimensions of life, if there is no test, you cannot be graded as the best. You know, in every juncture of our life, we are being tested in different ways, in different scenarios, mm -hmm. right? In our academics, why do we have examinations? So that we will be tested and we will be graded according to what we perform. So same <laughs> is the situation of life. We're being tested to see who is, you know, performing better, you know, or best f or, or ugly, for example. So that is the reason and the hikmah of uh, you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why we are into tests. You asked a question which is very predominantly the scenario and the situation of the current world where people they are not able to handle that kind of stress and they get into depression, they get into anxiety, sometimes they get into you know committing uh, you know harm to themselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has given the remedy, number one, as the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, Allah Rabbul Izzah, he says, Ala bi dhikrillahi tatma'innu al-qulub. With the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do hearts find serenity, satisfaction, pleasure, joy, calmness, comfortness, <coughs> and kind of uh, a mindset uh, that heart gives you that it is, you know, okay, you can do it, you can handle it. Because of unawareness of the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala people stressed out they get into a bigger mess again and again after all the series of stress and tests that they go on because of the lack of uh, understanding that that can be removed 
with the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that can be removed by having this mindset where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La yukallifu Allahu nafsan illa wus'aha. Allah, Rabbul Izzah, He does not put a burden upon you which you cannot bear. Now imagine, psychologically speaking, if you know that you can handle one to ten kind of pressure, you know that it's not going to go out of that, and you know that you are able to bear that pressure, that's a bearable pressure, it's not a burden uh, on your personality, you kind of get into a relaxing mode that, you know what, this is the thing that I can bear. Allah made this as a challenge for me, which I can bear and deal with it. When you have that sense of understanding, it becomes a lot more easier. So the first thing is effectively you need to get into uh, the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we talk about the dhikr of Allah, the greatest of all dhikr is the glorious Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran that Allah rabbul Izzah, he sent down this, this Quran as a rahmah, as a mercy, you know, as a shifa for the mu'mineen, for the believers. So shifa comes as a cure, as a solution for the problems of mankind. So if I'm into a problem, the best way is to go back to the Quran, read the Quran, read the stories of the past. They have gone into tests, they have gone into trials, and they got out of it because of the, the, the consciousness of Allah, because of the iman in Allah, because of the persistence that they have, because of the prayer and the ability to cope up those challenges. Then we can say that, you know, a, a, you know, a ability to have or to handle stress or to be patient in handling, as you say, that one should be patient and perform prayers in order to, you know, find his way out <coughs> of that. Uh, can we relate that to God, one of the pillars of Islam or of Tawheed, that God will believe in destiny, what Almighty Allah decrees upon one must happen. And Absolutely. I mean, know. your tests, many a times we see predominantly, even in the Muslim homes, mm -hmm. the youngsters in particular, they see, why did it happen to me? Why did Allah put me into problem? Why did Allah fail me? You know, why did I, 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 I'm not rich at this age? My friends are rich. Why did I do this? Why did I do, you know, didn't do that? So all these things, they are related to the matter of Qadr. When you are patient, when you have Iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you are determined believer, when you have that kind of qualities, obviously it gives the result and the fruits is that you have to trust Allah. Mm -hmm. You can't dictate terms to Allah, who to give, what to give, when not to give. Allah knows, He is all wise, He is all knowing. So when you have that trust in Allah, that tawakkul in Allah, that the decisions of Allah are there, I'm there as a slave of Allah to be tested and I accept and I ask Allah to ease my tasks for me. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make me, you know, strong enough to bear those pressures, right? So when I have that kind of tawakkul in Allah, that is a part of qadr. You know, you do your part, you because we need to understand we are responsible for actions. <laughs> Results lies in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Mm -hmm. So this is the, the way that we actually need to carry our mindset, inshallah. Mm -hmm. uh, just to bring up something about Qadr, like he, I want to continue this about Qadr. How do I know when something is under my control or when it was not under my control? You know, uh, one aspect of Qadr is this, because Qadr in itself is a show of itself, but just to narrow it down and uh, sort of connect it to what we're talking about, how do I know whether or not this is something I can control or something I couldn't control? Exactly. I mean, mm -hmm. we need to see, as I mentioned, whatever abilities that I have, you have, everyone has, we need to actually do our part. So <laughs> the actions are in our control. Results, they come from Allah mm -hmm. subhanahu wa ta'ala. If one understands this fine point that I have to do my part, as Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he said, mm -hmm. trust in Allah, but tie your camel. So tying mm -hmm. up the camel was your action. But even after tying, if that camel goes away, you know, that's basically the result. That's mm. between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's his decision. So we say that we attribute the actions. We are responsible for our actions. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to question us all about. So we need to have that control on our actions. You know, whenever Allah Rabbul Izzah talks about Iman, he joins it up with Amal-e-Salih. 
right? Mm -hmm. uh, Allah Rabbul Izzah, He talks about the Iman and following up with the actions. So the good mm -hmm. actions that we do, that are in our control, inshaAllah. Yeah, it's, it's a very nice to handle like the problems, handle the stress and so on, the pressure. But the question here needs to be asked and needs to be addressed as well, which is what causes the stress? What causes pressure? That's that's very, very significant uh, you know, point because when we go to the reasons why stress comes out, it becomes again very easy to deal with it. Many a times we see stress comes because if you lose someone who is very close to your heart, for example, that's a stress. It's very natural. But how do you deal with it is, 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 is very important. And you deal it with knowing the fact that when we say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilahi raji'un. So what calms your heart and releases your or manages your stress is this point of belief that, you know what, he has gone, I need to go one day or the other. Stress comes because of, you know, financial reasons. I don't have finance to manage my family. And there is a practical stress that many people, they go through. We talked about in the wealth management, how they can actually improve and increase their possibility of gaining wealth and gaining barakah in their wealth, inshallah. People get stressed because of, you know, the positions, you know, when, when uh, in, the, in the company, in the corporates where we work, they are being stressed because uh, I want some better position, but I'm not into that. You know, I want more and more, but I'm not into that. There is a work pressure. There is a financial pressure. There is a family pressure. You know, couples, they don't get along. There is a pressure between uh, fam you know, the, the wife and the husband. There are pressures in different ways. So we need to deal each pressure differently because not every pressure is the same of nature. So we need to understand that how we deal with it. So the fundamental rule is seeking the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any, any and every kind of pressure. That's a golden rule because for everything we go back to who? We go back to Allah. We said very clearly as a declaration of our belief, We worship Allah and to Him we ask for help. And when we say isti'anat, it comes only from Allah. You know, a certain help that comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we, we also know that stress comes when, when there is a lot of sins that happens from our side. We get into more stress because our heart, it becomes sick. It becomes sometimes dead. That is also a very strong reason of stress. The only way that removing the stress is making sure that you are in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, my brothers, it's a time to take a leave now. We talked a lot on the stress management. We hope that inshallah, it has benefited us first case and it will inshallah benefit you viewers. Thank you so much brothers. Thank you viewers for watching this. I am sure that the coming episodes of Youth Matters, a series which is beautifully and structured, uh, you know, series that uh, gives you insights of different aspects of your life. Inshallah, it's going to be highly beneficial uh, for one and all. We take a leave now. Up until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.